Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Today we are going to go explain what MIDI binding is and how it works inside Scalar 2 and also why it is so practical. Before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, as you can see, I have already loaded Scalar 2 inside the AUM in, in an audio uh, channel. So let's open it up and it's already maximized. In previous tutorials, I showed you how to detect chords and therefore scales and also how to browse scales, right? So let's um, call up for a particular scale. So let's type A minor, like so, and we have the a select and um, uh, we can browse a number of selected scales as you can see. So let's pick the first one, A minor scales, which sounds like this. Perfect, let's click on the A minor scale. Okay, and uh, as we have seen in the previous tutorial, you have now chords over the notes of that particular scale. Now, on the right hand side, you find a letter, and in this case it says B for the section B, but you find the also here at the top which says A for section A where you do your detection, and also for section C where you have your patterns, okay? So let's click on B here because we have uh, uh, already the code selected over the A minor scale, so let's click on B. What you see is at the top of the keyboard, you see a number of keys which are in gray, starting from C2. And if I press C2, it's the equivalent of pressing this, this chord, the first one, A minor. So if I go to D, it will play B diminished, and so on. E will be C major. Okay, so you might um, think, okay, why is this useful? Well, first of all, you can press only one key and it will play a chord. And if you have a very complex chord, then it will play that complex chord, which is very handy. So let's go, for example, for voice in one. So when I press C2, it will play that chord. And it doesn't matter how complicated and the distance of notes, you just need to press C2 and it will play that particular chord. Now, as you can imagine, you can use that through a MIDI controller or a MIDI keyboard, and therefore, if you don't want to play that entire chord, or you find it very difficult to play it through your hands, then you just play one key in that way. Now, you might just think, be thinking, okay, right, but that note, that chord which is linked as a MIDI binding to C2, it's just in the middle of, a, of uh, the keyboard, so I would like to move it because it might be in the way, which uh, makes perfect sense, as you as you will see in a second. So if you click here on the three dots, you will have this window, which we have seen before, where you can move up and down the view of the keyboard. And as you can see, it's the, the highlighted the gray notes still stay on C2, even when I move up the register, it still say C2 there. So this is just display octave. Below you have an option to zoom out and zoom in, but more importantly, down here you have option for active bind key scale. So if I press the, this single arrow to the right, it will move up, and if I do the opposite one, it will move down. And then I can move down one octave and also up an octave. And that allows you to um, you know, position where you would like um, those notes which have been binded to that uh, those chords over the A minor scale to be positioned. Also, underneath you find a selection for active bind the keys mode. So what it means here is it says uh, only white, so it's only going to use white keys. So as you can see, if I press a black key, you will hear just the note associated to that particular um, a key. Now, I can click on the arrow here and go for all, which means it will uh, use all the different keys on the keyboard, including the black keys, to represent all the chords uh, which have been selected over that particular scale, in this case, the E minor. And you also have an additional option, which is called the true scale. And what it does, again, it uses the same chords over the A minor scale, but it maps them against the scale on the keys of the keyboard. 
So in this case, A is here. We'll not use the next one because it's not within the scale. And then will be the next one. Not this one, this one. Okay? And this becomes, um, well, it makes more sense when you have, for example, more complicated uh, um, key or scale. Okay? So, let's go back to um, only white and let's move this down to start from A. Okay? So, when I press A, it will, it will play this first chord, A minor. Okay? So, let's... Um, close this window and let's see how we can use it. So let's open another audio channel. And um, in this audio channel, let's bring um, on a grand piano, a UV free, okay? Then let's maximize the keyboard in AUM. Let's connect the keyboard in terms of, we take the MIDI output from that keyboard to scale at two and the grand piano as well. Now, if I press some keys here, it will play both audio channels, the four, the keyboards will send MIDI messages to Scalar 2 and also Grand Piano 2. Now, as I move lower down here on the register, and I'm going to click on the arrow so I can see a lower part of the register, okay? You will find down here the chords coming from Scalar 2, but also the piano sounds coming from Grand Piano AU3. Now, let's adjust a little bit the MIDI input here and do some filtering so that we ensure that in this case, Scalar 2 will not receive any messages above um, B3. Uh, something like so, okay. And also for the grand piano, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to start the lower range from C4. Okay, like so. So, from C4, I will hear only the grand piano. Below C4, I will hear scalar 2. And you can see from the active LED um, that uh, below C4, only a scalar 2 is playing, and from C4 above, only grand piano is playing. Okay, so this is now the beauty. I can press here on an A key play that the A minor chord because I've done MIDI binding, okay? And I can use this, for example, to play with one uh, finger, only one finger, chords here. And then, for example, with another thing up, finger up here, I can actually play a simple melody. So let's try. So I used in this case only two fingers, one to play the chords on the lower part of the register, which will be rendered through scalar two. And then I play again, just with a simple finger, a melody on the right hand side. So this is great because it is playing the chords uh, which I've selected here, which is really nice. Now let's do something else as well. So let's um, create another audio channel. Okay. And let's bring in something like um, Eisen. Let's connect now Scalar 2 to Eisen so that the MIDI message coming out from Scalar 2 will go to Eisen. Let's see. Yeah, I have a pad selected, so that's fine. Now, if I press again uh, an A key here, you will hear both the Scalar 2, but also um, the sound coming out from Eisen. So let's go inside Scalar 2. Where it says here felt piano, click on it and uh, set it to off so the internal engine will not play. And now enjoy, you can do the same. We can play chords on the lower part um, directly from scalar into ISIM. And then on the upper part, we are going to play a melody with grand piano. And let's decrease a little bit of volume. achieving this just only with uh, two fingers and so it's really great because you just uh, um, you know have Scalar doing the hard work for you or playing chords. The other thing I wanted to show you is up here it says MIDI bind B 
because it's coming in from section B. Of course, if, for example, I was to select a number of chords, like so, and move it down here, okay, I will be on section uh, C, and I can disable section B for binding and activate section C, and I will have the chords then um, as a MIDI binding up here from section C. And you can see also up here is saying MIDI bind C and also for notes and also for chords here. Okay, so I hope um, you will uh, agree with me that it's a nice way to perhaps cheating in terms of playing chords, but it is really helpful when they are very complicated chords to use scalar in this way. So MIDI binding is really great because it allows you to play chords just with a single key. So you, then you can focus uh, all your other fingers to play another melody or another part, depending of course uh, how you're going to configure. In this case, because I'm using AUM, all your different uh, AUV3 inside different channels. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and as always, see you next time. Bye.